Hey guys, Pat Flynn here. I just announced on Twitter my upcoming book with Sophia, and I wanted to say a few things about it right here and right now for all of you. First, I want to thank you for all of your support, everything that you do for this channel, you're subscribing, you're liking, you're commenting. It's still a young channel, but we're seeing a lot of growth, and that's very exciting. So my upcoming book with Sophia is called The Best Argument for God. As the title suggests, it is a book on natural theology, making a class for making a case for classical theism. As I explained to some of the people who reacted uh, to my Twitter announcement, uh, the initial inspiration for this book actually comes from uh, an atheistic volume from Graham Oppie called The Best Argument Against God. I think that's a, I think that's a very good book. Obviously, I, I don't uh, agree with it <laughs> substantially, but it's a very good book. Uh, and it was the ins inspiration for me to write this book. And um, really, you know, this book is, it is interested in this other objection against the existence of God. This other objection um, that I think is a, a very interesting objection. Um, and I say other objection because the primary objection to the existence of God is, of course, the problem of evil. We've talked about that a lot here. But this other objection is, the well, it's the only other objection that Thomas Aquinas considers in the Summa. And that is, look, it seems like the principles of nature are enough. It can, the, the principles of nature can explain everything we need to explain. We don't need God to do it, right? And if you run that argument up to more contemporary times, it might take the form of something like this. If two theories explain just as much, believe the simpler atheism and theism or uh, uh, naturalism and classical theism explain just as much, naturalism is simpler, so just believe naturalism, right? And uh, I think that's a very interesting argument. I really do. Um, but I don't think that ultimately it is sound. And so the project of my book is to try and reverse that argument. And so what I tr try to argue in this book is that naturalism can only explain some, but not all, of what classical theism can when strapped with a lot more complexity. That's the project of this book. So the book fundamentally tries to set out what I think is all the sort of relevant data that a, a big picture theory or a worldview needs to explain. And I just go through some of that. And I, I try to make um, the best arguments I can, uh, arguments that uh, either convinced me when I was a naturalist or that I, I later discovered as I um, became a classical theist, um, to show that um, even where I think you can get a naturalistic explanation for something, a theistic one is better, but also certain instances where I don't think any naturalistic explanation is available at all. Uh, so you'll see a lot of stuff in this book. You'll, you, of course, you will see cosmological reasoning. Uh, I don't use any of Aquinas's five ways at all. I, I do use various insights from Aquinas. Uh, there are two contingency arguments in the book, but neither of them are uh, an argument from from Thomas, although there's some Thomistic inspiration in them. Uh, I do I do say a lot about the problem of evil, actually, because I think that uh, the bad the bad stuff of our experience is something that that uh, deserves an account. So I think that a worldview better be able to say something about that, right? So that does factor into my book. Um, I think you'll like the book. I think you'll like the book a lot. I think even if you're a skeptic, you'll like the book. Um, uh, and I want to thank all the skeptics that, that watch this channel. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are skeptics, agnostic, atheist. Uh, I appreciate the friendship. I appreciate the conversation. Uh, and I, I had all of you in mind when I was writing this book. I had you in mind as friends, as, as people I want to have these conversations with. This is not a, a book that's meant to be, uh, you know, all... Uh, triumphalist or anything like that. Uh, it's it's really a, a book of saying, hey, these. I think these are good arguments. I, I think this is, at the end of the day, this is why I um, became a, a classical theist. Uh, and I do try to, to work through some issues concerning the coherence of theism. So you will get a bit of that in the book as well. And, and you know, issues that we've talked about on this podcast before, you'll kind of get my most developed thoughts on them uh, concerning yeah, modal collapse and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, so it's it's a pretty big project. Um, so far, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. Uh, there's still a little bit more editing that has to be done, but we're I think we're going to be right on target for that July release. And I want to thank you all again for the support that you've given me on this channel. 
I can't wait for you to uh, get a copy of this book if you're so inclined to get a copy of, of the book. Uh, I don't I don't know if it is up for pre-order. Somebody on Twitter actually posted a link uh, to Amazon that the book looked like it was on Amazon. I was not informed of that, uh, so I can neither confirm nor deny if that's the actual book. But as soon as I know that it is up for, for pre-order or something like that, of course I will let you know about it. Uh, so yeah, just just a short announcement. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's been a lot of hard work. As you can tell, I've got some gray hairs in my, my beard now. I don't think I had those uh, when I f started this book project. Um, writing books is tough. It's tough, but it's, it's worth it. And uh, I hope you think it's worth it if you decide to grab it and read it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate all of you.